What up everybody? Back again here with our negative number unit. Today we're going to be looking at comparing rational numbers in real life scenarios. So let's dive under the water and see what our objective is today. Before we get started with our new material, let's review our key thought from last lesson. As you move to the right on the number line, the value of the numbers get bigger, and as you move to the left, the value of the numbers get smaller. The same is true with our vertical number line. As you move further up, the numbers get bigger, and as you move further down, the value of the numbers get smaller. In today's lesson, we're going to be using the same concept and same strategy that we learned in our comparing rational numbers using a number line, except now we're going to do it in a real world context. So the I do problem says the chart below shows temperatures for two cities on Monday last week. Write an inequality statement to compare the temperature in the two cities. Which city was the coldest? Write an explanation for your answer. So again, we're going to do our size check strategy. We're just going to write a statement to help us answer. We're looking for the coldest city. So blank was the coldest all right and we're going to go back and ooh, that is childlike handwriting right there wow that is not good that's okay we're going to go back and be looking for anything about temperature obviously and using our chart so it says it shows the temperature for two cities we know we want to write an inequality statement first to compare the temperature in the two cities we're looking for the coldest right and again if we're looking for the coldest we are looking for the smallest value here okay we're looking we remember our temperature lesson, and as we move further down the number line, it gets colder and colder, all right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to plot these two points on our number line. So for this number line, our zero is actually right here on the top of the number line, and all the numbers other than zero showing are negative integers. So we don't even show the positive side of this number line, and it shows me right here that we are measuring this in Celsius. So I remember from our temperature lesson that zero degrees Celsius means freezing, right? So both of our cities are below freezing. New York City was negative eight degrees Celsius. So we're gonna start at zero. My negative eight tells me I'm gonna be going down on my number line away from zero, eight units. And so obviously that would be right here because we already have it labeled. And this is going to be NYC, New York City. Washington DC is negative 8.5, negative eight and five tenths or you could say negative eight and a half degrees Celsius. So again, the negative sign tells me I'm going down away from zero on the number line. I'm gonna be doing the opposite of a positive and I'm going down eight and then a little more right here. And I see that Washington DC is gonna be in between eight, negative eight and negative nine. So I'll just put DC right there. So my question was asking me, which is the coldest? which means I wanna be the furthest away from zero going down. And I can see that that is Washington DC. So I'm gonna say Washington DC, or just DC, was the coldest. And my explanation's gonna be the same as it was last lesson. Washington DC, or just DC, was further down on the number line. So I know that it was the smallest number. You could also rephrase this and you could say New York City was warmer than Washington DC because it was further up on the number line. Okay, both of those are saying the same thing, but our question was asking us for the coldest. Let's do a we do problem. So for our we do problem, it says Joni bought two gifts for Father's Day for Andrew. She withdrew $5.34 from her checking account to pay for a shirt and $8.93 to pay for a hat. Write two numbers that represent the change to her checking account, then write an inequality statement that shows the relationship between the two numbers. So First of all, I need to know, okay, what two numbers represent the change for her checking account? If she withdrew $5.34, that means she's taking out of her bank account. So this is going to be a negative $5.34. In the same thought, if she's taking $8.93 out of her checking account to pay for a hat, I also know that this is going to be represented with a negative $8.93. Both of these are debits to her checking account, which means she's taking money out. So we're gonna view zero here as her bank account balance. All right, so this is whatever her balance was. And then to pay for the shirt, she withdrew $5.34. So I need to go backwards because she's losing money one, two, three, four, five. If you notice, my scale is one unit, which means 
I don't have 3,400 split up on my number line. So I'm going to have to kind of guesstimate where that would go. I know I'm going to have to go backwards to 5, and then 3,400 would be less than $5.50, which would be a half. So I'm going to put it a little bit before that, and I'll put it about right here, and this is how much she used to pay for the shirt. If I look at where the hat is going to be, again, I have to go backwards, okay, because I'm taking money out of her account, $8.93. So I'm, I know I'm going to go back eight units right here, and then another 9,300. So now 9,300 to be very close to the next integer, which would be negative nine. I'm going to picture that as being right here, which means I think $8.9300 would be about right there, and that would be for the hat. So my two numbers I wrote down were negative $8.93, and negative $5.34. I put them on the number line to help me write an inequality statement. Now I see that the hat is further to the left on the number line, which means it's going to have a smaller value. So when I write this in my inequality statement, which I'll do right here, I know that negative $8.93 is going to be less than five, sorry, negative $5.34. And again, the thing right here, the tricky misconception a lot of people have is they're viewing these in positive because most of the numbers we deal with in life are in positive. So if these are both positive, $8.93 would be greater than $5.34. But because they're in the negative, it means that $8.93 is further away from zero to the left, making it the smaller number. So I've written my numbers, I put them on the number line, and I wrote my inequality to show the relationship between the two numbers. Let's take a look at a U-try problem. So for our U-try problem, if you've never done this with us before, I'm gonna go ahead and read it, then you can push pause and solve it yourself, and then push play, and I will solve the problem so you can check your understanding. If you're not ready to do it by yourself yet, that's totally okay. You can do it with us as another we do problem in your notes which is a perfect time in this video to tell you that the notes are in the description of the video. There's a link to a Google Doc that you can either write in or print off and have the notes in front of you. So it says, Kenneth descended 32 feet below sea level. Terry descended 15 feet below sea level. Write two integers that represent how far they swam in relation to sea level. Then write an inequality statement that shows the relationship between the two numbers. If you're ready to do this, okay, for this one, I didn't give you the number line, so you can actually draw it yourself. But if you're ready, go ahead and push pause, solve the problem, and then push play to check your understanding. Hopefully, you just paused it, and now you're checking your work. So I know that I'm going to need to write two integers that represent how far they swam in relation to sea level. So I know from this number line, the zero is going to represent sea level. So you can do this on a horizontal or a vertical number line. Because it's for elevation, I'm going to make a vertical number line. I'm gonna change it to put an arrow right there. Perfect. And then I know that they descended below sea level. Both of them were going down away from sea level. So I'm just gonna put zero right here because I know both of these are going to go into the negative. So zero for this number line represents the sea level. Now. Kenneth descended 32 feet below sea level, and Terry descended 15 feet below sea level. So I'm going to start with Terry, and I know if I was working backwards, right, I'd have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and I'm just going to try to guesstimate where it would be. So I think negative 15 would be about right here, and this is where Terry stopped. Okay, so I'll represent that with Terry, Oops, capital E, all right. And then if I kept going, I get negative 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, negative 21, and I could keep going. And it looks like Kenneth, if I kind of guesstimated here, would be about negative 32. And I would say Kenneth descended right there. Now, if you notice, I didn't label all the units. I just kind of used it to help me visualize my thinking, and that is a great way to save you some time. I chose to use negative 32 because it's told me I was descending and going below sea level, which makes it a negative. I'm going away from zero down. And also Terry descended and went below sea level. So that's a way of saying that I'm going into my negative number territory. So now I've written my two integers. I want to write an inequality statement, again, using less than, greater than, or equal to to show the relationship between the two numbers, all right? So here I'll put negative 15, and I can put negative 32, and if I want an inequality statement, which of these would go in the middle of them, okay? 
Well, I see that negative 15 is further up the number line, which means it is greater than negative 32. So my inequality statement is going to say negative 15 is greater than negative 32. Again, the misconception is if you don't draw it on a number line, you might think negative 32 is bigger because you're thinking in the positive. But when you get into the negatives, the negative 32 tells you you're further down the number line than the negative 15. And we dread a visual model to help us picture that. So what we want you to take with you is as you move to the right or up the number line, the value of the numbers is going to get bigger. And as you move to the left or down the number line, right, the value of the numbers is going to get smaller. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today and checking out our lesson. We really appreciate you guys. If you would, please leave a comment. Tell us where you're watching from. Like the video and join our Instructive Beats family by subscribing. We would love to hear from you. You can follow us on all the social media platforms. Again, thank you so much. Check out our negative number unit in the song. We would love to have you check those out. Instructive Beats, out.